Hello Year 9s and welcome back to Science. We're continuing on with disease today um, with Lesson 3 and our focus today is bacteria. Okay, all right, today's, um, this is the relevant section of the textbook 4.3, it's called Invasion Alien Alert and our two success criteria for today are to identify the following pathogens, name each one and a disease it can cause, and then also to focus on the bacteria by focusing on structure and function and giving examples of bacterial disease. Okay, um, I would like you to please watch this video, so pause my video and go onto this video. I will link the, uh, the link it in the video description box. All right, hope you enjoy the video. I'm gonna move myself, it's blocking the view. Okay, so um, the title of this slide should be pathogens. So basically, we have talked about pathogens. They are disease causing organisms and they're usually very, very small. So we call them microbes or microorganisms. Um, you can see here that some are considered living and some are considered non-living. Now, you're probably familiar with um, viruses, um, bacteria, fungi. You might not have heard of parasites, protozoa or prions, um, but we're going to talk about these in the next few slides. I'm going to move myself back now. Um, there we go. All right, so there are different types of pathogens and we're going to start with the living ones on the blue on the left. Okay, let's start with bacteria. Bacteria are single-celled organisms. They cause illness by destroying cells and releasing or releasing toxic chemicals. And we can see here, we've got lots and lots of bacteria growing on this surface, each of the yellow spheres. Some examples of diseases that are caused by bacteria include food poisoning, cholera, and tetanus. Um, you might know that you have um, been vaccinated against that. All right, let's have a look at fungi. Fungi can be multicellular, so they're bigger uh, because they're made up of more than one cell, unlike bacteria, or they can be single-celled. They take nutrients from host cells, such as a human, um, by piercing healthy cells. So we can see here the fung fungus, the fungi has pierced these healthy cells and it's now using the nutrients of this person, this person's foot in, in particular. They occur in warm, moist places like your feet or um, the genitalia, the, that region, um, or like in, our, in my house at the moment, we have a little bit of mold growing in our garage because when it rains, it's very wet and it's also a warm environment. An example of a fungal disease is athlete's foot. All right, um, two more types of living pathogens. The first one is a parasite. Now you've probably heard of that. You might've watched the movie. Basically, a parasite is an organism that lives on or in the body of another organism, and that organism is called the host. Okay, and the parasites take nutrients from the host. However, the host receives nothing beneficial in return and may be harmed. There should be a why there. Um, some diseases caused by parasites include infections caused by tapeworms or roundworms. So this is a tapeworm. This is a roundworm. Um, tapeworms, for example, they go and infect your gut, your digestive tract, and they use these little arms to bury themselves into the lining of your gut. And they will take lots of nutrients from you, but you will receive nothing in return and you might actually get a nasty disease. Protozoa are single-celled organisms, so again, very, very small, made up of only one cell. They are, another, they are another example of parasites, and you've probably heard of malaria. Um, you might have also heard of amoeba, but these two um, pathogens are examples of protozoa. Um, sorry, they're examples of diseases caused by protozoa. Okay types of pathogens continued. Now we're looking at non-cellular pathogens. They are not living. So if we have a look at this diagram again. We've had a look at the cellular ones and now we're looking at the acellular, not cellular, not living pathogens of which we will discuss too. Viruses is the first one. Again, I'm going to move my... <laughs> there we go, that's better. Okay, so here on the left you can see um, multiple different viruses. 
they are considered non-cellular because um, they can actually, they can't replicate and divide and produce more of themselves without a host. So for example, a human or an animal or about a plant. So without being inside someone or something, they cannot divide. They're super, super, super tiny. Um, and the coronavirus family of diseases is uh, that's one example of a virus as is chicken pox and measles they are also caused by viruses all right prions this one might be a new one for you they prion stands for protein infection so the pr comes from protein the ion comes from pre, um infection um all right so this is these are abnormal and infectious proteins it's extremely normal to have proteins in your body of course but these ones are abnormal and infectious and they can cause diseases like this i don't know if you can see it's a bit hard to see but there's like holes in this this is a piece of brain it's been cut uh, cross section and you can see there's lots of little gaps that little holes and they're caused by these protein infections do not fear though this is a very very rare disease it's called transmissible spongy form encephal encephalopathies that's a group of diseases where your brain gets those tiny holes and looks spongy all right but today's focus is bacteria so please um, watch this video this link will be in the video description box as well um, so pause my video while you do so all right welcome back hope that was interesting um, let's keep going so bacteria structure this is going to rehash some of the things you just learned about in that video you watched okay bacteria bacteria are one of the first forms of life on earth they were formed Three, uh, from 3.5 billion years ago. So a lot earlier than humans. They are microbes and they can be pathogenic, meaning some bacteria cause disease. Notice how I say some bacteria. Bacteria are unicellular. This is an example of a bacteria. It's only made up of one cell. So it's a prokaryote. Um, if you think back to year eight science, prokaryotes, they don't have a nucleus. So that's why the genetic material, um, the DNA in this bacteria just kind of floats there. It's not surrounded by a membrane. It's not surrounded by, it's not inside a nucleus. It's living and they're microscopic. There are thousands of bacteria that exist, um, but scientists are still discovering more. All right, as you can see here, um, there are all sorts of shapes and sizes and arrangements that bacteria can come in. Some common ones are the spherical bacteria, round ones, or some of them look more like rods. They look like little pills. Some of them are spiral as well. And you can see here, um, yes, you can have round ones, but you can have pairs. You can have uh, a partner of uh, four altogether. You can have cubes. You can have like clusters or you can have the, the um, circles, the spheres lined up in a row. Some bacteria have these funny looking tails, the flagellum, flagellum, flagella. You learned about that last year as well. Some of them don't. And these are all different ways that scientists can use to um, classify or group different, um, different bacteria. Because since, since so many exist, it's useful to have a way to um, categorize them. All right, so I did mention that only some bacteria are pathogenic and cause disease. Some bacteria are helpful, believe it or not. Bacteria are part of our natural environment. There are many helpful uses, such as decomposers. So decomposers, um, bacteria in soil, they actually break down dead animals and plants. Um, and in doing so, the nutrients inside these dead animals and plants, which have been broken down, get returned to the soil for, for future living organisms. So that's really useful. Humans can actually, in humans, we have bacteria in our gut, in our digestive tract, and they can actually help defend your body against disease. In the intestines of herbivores, such as cows or kangaroos, um, bacteria can also help with digestion. So we can see that they they can be useful. But there are a um, 
some that are pathogenic. So it's actually only a small percentage of bacteria which are pathogenic, which cause disease. However, hundreds of diseases can be caused by these bacteria. Um, I've mentioned cholera a few times, but some you might have heard of whooping cough. You might have heard of tuberculosis. These two are kind of they're eradicated in Australia now, so we're very lucky. You might have heard of the plague, the Black Plague. Plague that was a bacterial disease. Um, tetanus, um, but also things like food poisoning, like salmonella, that's a bacteria as well, and cause diarrhea and pneumonia. That's just a few examples, girls and boys. All right, so how do these bacteria cause disease? Number one, they can damage the cells and tissues of the infected organism directly by breaking down the cells for food. So for example, if um, I was infected by a bacteria, it could be breaking down, let's say, my gut cells and using the contents of my cells to fuel themselves because bacteria need to eat as well. Or the bacteria might be um, able to release these toxins, these poisons. Um, so if you picture a bacteria, it would release it from itself. And then those toxins would travel around the body through the circulatory system and affect the, the body of the host, the, the infected organism like me, if I was infected by the bacteria and the poison could travel around me. All right, we've made it to um, the end of this explana explanation. Um, you have a whole bunch of things to work on now. So answer these four questions and post your work onto the one note. It's called lesson three bacteria when you're finished. Um, all of these questions can be answered using these slides, which are attached to today's lesson instructions. Um, or feel free to read the textbook as well if you think you want some further details about something. So it's the 4.3 section of your textbook. Um, Year nines, you might also find, well, you will also find at the end of this, uh, at, at the end of today's PowerPoint, uh, after this slide, there are a few other, a few more slides. Um, just a note, these are for your general knowledge only. They go into a little bit more detail about a few particular diseases. So feel free to read through them or if you would prefer, research a different bacterial disease that interests you. And there are a few gruesome photos, so skip through them if you get a bit queasy. It's mainly just the next slide. This one. And there's a bonus video if you're interested as well. Um, all right. Thank you for your attention and enjoy learning about bacteria.